Hello fellow Robloxians, in this first episode of the minigame series, we will go over map changes and GUI announcements. In the videos after this one, we'll work on the actual gameplay of the different types of minigames. As always, let's start in an empty base plate. Go ahead and carve out how you want your lobby to be. I'm here to help you script, so I won't worry too much about aesthetics. Just make sure you have a spawn point on your lobby. Next, create base plates for the different maps that you want to have. If you'd like, you can also begin placing other elements that you want in your map. Just make sure to group them together and name the group after your minigame. Create a folder inside the server storage. Name it Maps, as this is where we will store them when not in use. Drag and drop each of them to this folder, but be careful not to cut or copy and paste, as this may change the position of the model. Now that all our maps are ready for use, let's work on our script. Insert a server script into the server script service. Create a variable for the maps folder. This will come in handy. Notice the wait for child function. If you refer to things normally, especially at the beginning of the script, or use a function like find first child, which will not wait for the object to load, it may result in an error. Minigames are basically a series of randomly selected games looped over and over again. So let's make ourselves a function start round that we can use every time a new game begins. At the start of each game, let's make sure that the minimum player requirement is met. Let's make a variable min players up top so that we can easily change this requirement as necessary. To continuously check if there are enough players, let's use a while loop. Unlike with a for loop, we don't need to know when this loop will end. For all we know, player 1 may never find someone to play with. So while the number of players is less than the minimum player count, let's wait one second. Now it's especially important here that the player knows that the game is actually working and waiting for a condition to be met. Having enough players. So let's work on our announcement GUI now. Create a GUI inside of the start degree and name it Announce GUI. Inside it, create a text label and customize it however you'd like. Can you change the text of a player's GUI from a server script? Nope, not directly. Instead of using remote events and making the server tell the client what to do, let's teach the client to know what to do and when to do it using the changed event. Create a string value inside the replicated storage and name it to announce. It's important the string value is inside the replicated storage and not the server storage, because unlike the server storage, the client side objects can see inside the replicated storage. The intent is for the server to change the string value to what needs to be announced, and at the same time, the client will be capable of detecting when this value is updated. Create a local script inside the text label inside your announced UI. Let's also make a variable to make the string value inside the replicated storage convenient for us to use. The only property we expect to change is its text. So use the changed event to detect this change in the string value. If the value is not blank, we'll change the text to the text label so it matches the value of the string value and make the text label visible. Otherwise, making the value a blank string will be our way of making the text label invisible. Inside our server script, let's copy and paste the variable for the to announce value inside the replicated storage. Create a function announce with the text and duration of the announcement as the two parameters. Set the string value as the text parameter and if a duration parameter is declared, make it wait that amount of time and use the clear function. We'll work on the clear function right now so it's okay to see the red squiggly line underneath it. Because we're running the clear function in this position of the script, we must declare it above and not below this point, otherwise the script will not recognize the function soon enough. For the clear function, all we have to do is set the value of the string value to a blank string. Just like earlier in the local script, no space, just quotation marks. Another function that would be handy is a countdown function. Aside from having the number of seconds to count down as a parameter, let's make another parameter that may accompany the countdown in the front. For example, seeing numbers out of context might be confusing, but if we clarify that, 
the game will end in a number of seconds, it's much better. It's much better. We're going to use the announce function here, so be sure that this countdown function is somewhere underneath it. The sort of prefix will be concatenated with the number of seconds. Thanks to this if statement, you will not need to always have a prefix parameter if it is not necessary. We now have all the announcing functions we need. Let's work on our start round function now. So far, we wait until the minimum player requirement is met. I'm going to add a countdown following this. Next, we need to select a random map. We'll get the random map using math.random. It will return an integer, a whole number, within the range of its first and second parameter. Let's have the random number be any number from 1 to the number of maps that we have. That way, each map has a chance to be chosen. The getChildren function will order the maps, and so the random number will determine which map is chosen. If the random number is 2, for example, the second map in the maps folder will be chosen. Once it's chosen, let's announce the map name. Again, I concatenated this with another string to clarify the significance of the map name. We also need to set the parent of the map to the workspace so that the player will be able to see it and interact. Let's count down to the start of the game, wait, and return the map to the maps folder. The rest of the minigame action will be handled by the module script we'll make later on. Now that all our functions are complete, what do we need to do with our start round function? Well, we need to put it in a while true loop. Remember, minigames are a series of games that play over and over again. Before this endless loop, however, we may want to wait a few seconds. We have now completed map changing and announcements. Feel free to test it out and ensure that the maps are changing as they should. If everything is good, we can get a head start on the next episode where we will be scripting the minigame gameplay. Insert a module script into the current service script and name it game module. Inside the module, create a function run with the chosen map as a parameter. As we take over gameplay in this module script, expect to be reusing a lot of code. One last step. Back in the service script, create a variable for this module script using the require function so that we can easily access it. After we announce for the game to begin, we'll execute game module.run and send the map name as a parameter. And we'll take it from here in the next video. Thank you so much guys for watching. I hope it helped. And if you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to leave a comment down below or visit my Discord channel.